Hi, my name is Dr. Rob Rosbrook, and I'm the Chief of Limb Lengthening and Complex Reconstruction at the Hospital for Special Surgery. I'm going to talk to you today about bow leg realignment with tibial osteotomy. We have to start with an understanding of normal alignment parameters. And what you can see here is a um, cartoon that depicts all of the normal uh, lower extremity alignment parameters. It's a bit complicated, but for the most part, a line between the center of the hip and the center of the ankle goes right through the middle of the knee. That represents a situation where there's the most optimal force or load uh, on both the inside and outside part of the knee. Now, in a situation like this where somebody has a bow leg deformity, you can see that the lines from the hip to the ankle are very much deviated from the center of the knee and really fall to the inside part of the knee. And that leads to a situation over time where there's overload of the medial or inside joint compartments. This graph um, gives a, a depiction of the amount of force overload. In a normal situation, you can see that the load on both the medial and lateral compartments of the knee is about 400 newtons. The medial compartment loads are depicted by the blue line. The lateral compartment loads are depicted by the red line. What, what's being shown here with this orange line is that if somebody has about a 10 degree bow leg deformity or varus deformity, that load on the inside part of the knee increases from about 400 newtons to about 1500 newtons. So the, the take home message is that deformity overloads the respective compartment of the knee. Bow leg alignment overloads the medial side of the knee. When we're planning corrections of deformity, we use a lot of uh, geometry to figure out um, where the osteotomy needs to be and how much the deformity correction needs to be. So for example, in step one, you can see that the new ankle should be quite lateral and you can see that in step three there's a apex of deformity and that's a um, the place where the osteotomy would need to be done. So let's take this uh, example of a 45 year old man who has medial sided knee pain. And If you look at these x-rays you can see that the medial or inside part of his knee has become narrowed and has moderate arthritis of the knee. A long x-ray of the left side of the knee shows that the line from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle is 31 millimeters deviated from the inside part of the knee. So again, that shows that he's overloading the inside part of his knee. And deformity planning shows that he has an 11 degree deformity. And we can cut the bone at the at the apex of this deformity just below the knee joint, correct it by 11 degrees and expect to have a correction of the deformity. At the time of his surgery, I performed an arthroscopy to inspect and treat his knee. And what I was able to see is that he already has <coughs> moderate uh, to severe loss of cartilage on the inside part of the knee. And that's what you can see here. Now what we did is microfracture, making drill holes in the areas where there is complete loss of cartilage, and that helps bring the bone marrow to the surface and helps regenerate the cartilage. At the same time, um, we do an osteotomy, and you can see here this is shown as a partial cut in the bone, and we shim the bone open the number of degrees that is necessary to correct the alignment. And this is what it looks like at the uh, follow-up visit with the plate and screws in place and the bone healing very nicely. You see on the long x-ray that the hip to ankle line now goes right through the center of the knee and there's been very significant decrease on that abnormal overload on the inside part of the knee. When we went back and took his plate out at a year, um, we repeated the arthroscopy and we were able to document that he had fantastic regeneration of cartilage. So the regeneration of the cartilage really came about for a number of reasons which included realignment and taking load off the inside part of the knee and also by adding stem cells and doing microfracture we were able to regenerate 
the, um, the inside part of his knee and avoid a joint replacement. Now, I showed you an example of a technique where we use a plate and screws for relatively um, simple uh, deformities, but we also do use um, a circular external fixators and hexapods. And um, so I want to give you an idea of when I use the more severe um, modality um, and the using the circular external fixator. Well, let's take a look at this young woman who presented with severe uh, bilateral bow leg deformities, but there was also a rotational component. So this makes the deformity more complicated. You can see that the lines are deviated to the inside part of the knee, and she's overloading her knee. She's starting to develop pain. We use the hexapod frames to do the deformity correction. This is what it looks like when it's all healed. And then you can see how the realignment has been very successful with the lines going right through the center of the knee. And this results <coughs> in a situation that is both functionally and aesthetically advantageous uh, for her. And this will change her future. Um, and she should really not develop arthritis. Now let's go back to this example of this older woman who has this severe bilateral bow leg deformity, large mechanical axis deviations and overload of the inside part of the knee, and she's developed progressive arthritis on the inside part of the knee. We used circular external fixators as an alternative treatment to joint replacement, and with gradual corrections of the deformities, we were able to correct her uh, bow legs completely and we were able to unload the medial compartments of the knee, compartments of the knee, and you can see how the x-rays look so much better by taking all that extra load off the inside parts of her knee. I want to thank you for your attention, and what I've tried to show you here is an approach that we use for bow leg realignment with tibial osteotomy. In summary, if it's a relatively um, small to moderate deformity, less than about 10 to 11 degrees and it's a uniplanar deformity, then usually I will um, do an osteotomy and use internal fixation with an acute correction. If there already is a moderate arthritis of the knee, we'll often perform arthroscopy and microfracture and add stem cells to help regenerate cartilage. If on the other hand the deformity is more complicated, meaning that it's a larger deformity or it's multi um, planar meaning it has components in the what are we call the axial plane or the sagittal plane that makes it more complicated then I will use a circular external fixator thank you for um, letting me update you on bow leg realignment with tibial osteotomy